what is hydrosalpings exactly. In the fallopian tube, sometimes water can block the tube due to obstruction, either proximal or distal. And that water contained in a tube, which make the tube to swell, to be big, is called hydrosalpings. In, it means fallopian tube that is blocked with water or fluid. Now, hydro will stand for water. Salpings is the, it's a word for fallopian tubes. Now, what can cause blockage of fallopian tubes with water? What are the things which can lead to a person or a woman having what is called block tubes? And that block tube also filled with water. Now, fallopian tubes are blocked by scar, which is formed inside, or by even adhesions, which are formed inside. And now the paralysis, the parallelstatic movement of the tube is hindered. And now the chances that an egg and a sperm to meet becomes very difficult. Now, the causes of uh, hydrosalpings, it may be something like pelvic infection, what we call PID. It can be caused as well by endometriosis. It can be due to some sexually transmitted infections which are ascended into the tube and affect the tube. And the commonest is chlamydia and a gonococcal infection. And you can, your tube can also be blocked by you know, having an operation, something like post-ectopic pregnancy, and fibroid as well can apply pressure to your tubes and then block them and they become swollen and the fluid is retained in that tube and the egg and the sperm cannot meet. Therefore, any surgery, abdominal surgery, can also cause blockage in your tube, like having appendix removed or any bowel surgery can lead to adhesions and then blockage of your tube. Now, the commonest cause of infertility in South Africa is mainly tubal blockage, being the commonest cause of women, you know, having difficulty in getting pregnancy. And all what I named, like endometriosis, is the most common cause of those tubal problem. Pelvic infection being the other cause as well and also sexually transmitted condition may also cause that problem. Now, now, how do we diagnose the blockage of the fallopian tubes? A, an ultrasound can be used to actually see the tubes, especially if they've got fluid, and that we say the fluid is in the tubes and that or in the adnexus, and then, then we know that you have what is called hydrosalpings. You can have unilateral, means one side, and you can have both tubes flu uh, uh, filled with fluid and both tubes not functioning. Then you can do as well what we call HSG, which stands for hysterosalpingogram. They inject that, that uh, dye, and then it will actually show, and you'll see that the tubes are dilated and full of fluid. You can do a test which is called HICOC, which is hysterosalpingo contrasonography. And you can do a test called sonohistorogram as well. Those are the basic four you know, tests which, which you can do to really before you do any surgery to find out whether you have hydrosalpings or not. The other method of diagnosing the condition is with a laparoscopy. In other words, under anesthesia and uh, putting in a laparoscope into your abdomen, then you can see the hydrosalpings. In all cases, the condition will impact your fertility chances. In other, in other words, hydrosalpings will affect your chances of becoming pregnant simply because your tubes are blocked. And therefore, there is no way that the sperm and an egg can you know, come together or the sperm can fertilize an egg. Because where fertilization is supposed to be, it's usually where hydrosalpings or the blockage is. Therefore, the sperm cannot meet the egg. Now, can I just get IVF and, and not uh, treat 
hydrosalpings. Usually people will ask, no, no, I've got um, uh, bilateral hydrosalpings, but can I just, you know, do IVF so that I can be pregnant? The question, the answer is no. Even if you go and do IVF with hydrosalpings, your chances of pregnancy are terrible, terrible low. Because that fluid, that chemical fluid in the tube tend to drip into the uterine cavity, tend to disturb implantation of an egg or anything which you put into, into the uterine cavity. Yes, IVF is the best option for women with hydrosalpings. Definitely. IVF is the only way for you to get to pregnancy if you got bilateral hydrosalpings. However, the fluid will affect, as I said, pregnancy if that hydrosalpings is not being removed. Therefore, it's very important that the hydrosalping should also be attended to because if it's not, it will give you a high rate of implantation failure, it will give you a high rate of IVF failure, it will give you a high rate of miscarriage. A study was done in this you know, site where they were looking actually at the success rate of a patient with hydrosalpings and without hydrosalpings. It was found out that patients with hydrosalpings have the lowest pregnancy rate of about 19%. And also study shows that the person with hydrosalpings have the lowest implantation rate of about 8%. And delivery rate as well was low in, in patients or women with hydrosalpings of about 13%. Therefore, high rate of pregnancy loss as well was encountered in this patient who got pregnant with hydrosalpings using obviously an IVF method to get to pregnancy. Now, what are the treatment we can offer to people who've got hydrosalpings? That's where the problem starts in most of the cases. That's where a lot of patients start to be uneasy when you come to the treatment of hydrosalpings. Firstly, hydrosalpings needed to be removed. In other words, that tube, because it's already dilated, that tube is already blocked. That tube cannot be, you know, operated. That tube cannot, we cannot do even a reconstructive surgery to that tube. Then you'll need to do what we call laparoscopic salpingectomy. Salpingectomy means you go there and remove the tube. Other people may say, no, no. Maybe do salpingostomy. Go there and open the tube and drain the water and then leave the tube as it is. Unfortunately, recurrency rate of hydrosalp uh, hydrosalpings is very high. Therefore, you'll go two to three times or four times in theater draining that tube, that fluid now and then. The other method, it can be what you call sclerotherapy, where you literally uh, using a chemical to actually burn and, and, you know, the tube and them and, and just uh, uh, cauterize the tube so that the tube is now shrink and that water can be expelled. And this method as well has got the highest recurrency rate. After we have done that sclerotherapy, the your chances that in another year or two, you'll go back to theater because that hydrosalpings have recurred, have come back again. Now, the other method, which is most reliable as well, is to go there and do what is called tubal ligation. Yes, I'm saying tubal ligation. Yes, it's, I know you, you think it's not the way, but yes, tubal ligation. Because remember, I said the reason why with hydrosalpings you cannot be pregnant is because the water leaks into your uterine cavity, especially if you go for IVF, and that makes pregnancy to be impossible. But going there and clamp the tube will, you know, prevent the, the water going into the uterine cavity. And in that case, your pregnancy chances are also high because there's no fluid drainage into the uterine cavity. The repairing of the block tube, as I said, it's actually have high recurrency rate. Therefore, the, the best method or the option is really to do what you call laparoscopic salpingectomy. 
The success rate with IVF after hydrosalping has been treated is extremely high. And the success rate of, you know, after you've done what is sclerotherapy is, is not high. But immediately you do salpingectomy, you increase the, your chances of pregnancy by 34 to 40% if you do an IVF. Now, your ability to get pregnant with hydrosalpings really vary or depend on the severity of the tubal blockage. Fine? But most of the time, if you pick up the, the hydrosalpings with an ultrasound or any other method, that tube is, is damaged inside and that fluid will actually increase your chances of complication when you attempt to be pregnant with hydrosalpings. That you have got high rate of miscarriage we talked about and you've got also a, a poor implantation as well is one of the effects which come in there. And then also delivery is also low in those uh, group of patients. Therefore, it's very important that if you have hydrosalpings, you really do what is called laparoscopic salpingectomy so that then you can go for IVF to get the, the to you know to increase your chances of pregnancy with IVF. Thank you.